Well, hey, everybody, it's Peter Coffin. So a lot of people really don't like that I said that H-Bomb did not do a good job uh, criticizing plagiarism. Now, the reason why people are saying this is because they like when individual plagiarists get punished. That's, that's really what they want to do about plagiarism. But here's why I think it's important to make the kind of video I made about it. Well, there's two reasons, and they're kind of both linked. Um, the first one is that when you don't address something systemically, all you essentially do is play whack-a-mole forever. If you stop one guy from taking advantage of a situation to meet incentives and get rewarded for it, uh, you take him down, then another person who previously wasn't successful as him uh, will continue to do it and become as successful as him. And that's the second part of the whack-a-mole thing. Essentially, by making plagiarism the focus and disposing of a guy, uh, specifically a queer guy, we'll talk more about that in a second, H-Bomb made a video that just directs a bunch of people to spin their wheels, play whack-a-mole. And when people play whack-a-mole, they realize that whack-a-mole can be a lot of fun. So they go looking for moles that aren't on the board. On my Substack, I wrote a companion piece for my first video, and I talked a little bit about how they've established basically a witch hunt with this. A guy by the name of Ben Jordan published proof of how a Nebula creator, uh, a video from Nebula, a company that H-Bomb is partnered with and creates content for, uh, was lifted nearly word for word from one of his videos. Nebula's response was to double down and uh, defend the creator that did it. Nebula's chief content officer uh, did exactly what uh, the authors at the start of H-Bomb's video said plagiarists often do. In the lawsuit between Ellis and Bova and the studios, one tactic the studios used was to accuse them of being the real plagiarists, of ripping off Caves of Steel when they were writing Brillo. Call the people they're plagiarizing from the real plagiarists. Uh, that's what Nebula's chief content officer, uh, Sam from Wendover, did. But what Ben Jordan really did was just use verifiable information to say something that many other people have also said. Another example is a gentleman by the name of Adam Neely, who gave an interview several years ago where he repeated something that he had heard somewhere else. Adam Neely is getting a bunch of shit from uwu small beans who are protecting queer creators from plagiarists like him, who are, you know, simply participating in human conversation the way anyone does. There's more examples, but these are the ones I used because they're so clear cut. And they're also uh, by, from what I can tell, straight, white, cis, male creators. H-Bomb's video completely voids the idea of any systemic change. It sets a barrier at the system. It takes a naturalistic view of law as if that is just how things are, that's how they will always be, and what we can expect in response to the law is what we've always been seeing in response to the law. That's just how the world is, naturally. As a Marxist, I disagree with that view. That's the point of making a video. That's the reason I made a video. Not because I hate H-Bomb. I'll say this. If I truly, absolutely hated H-Bomb, I would never talk about H-Bomb. The people I truly hate in this world, I don't say a word about. Not by name, anyway. And there's actually not that many of those people, relatively speaking. Yes, I am very irritated at the mode of criticism that H-Bomb took. I'm not going to pretend I'm not. That, that would be a lie. The problem is discouraging millions of viewers from anything systemic. Uh, systemic criticism, action against the system, changing the system. It literally, explicitly discourages that. I'm not smart enough to know what we're supposed to do about plagiarism. I think trying to fix it in any systemic way could risk making it worse. The problem with that is the existing law puts creators like Ben Jordan and Adam Neely, uh, privileged white males, in a bad position where Ben Jordan had to defend himself against Nebula, which is a company, not a person, 
and a fan base established around all of the independent Nebula creators that are part owners of Nebula. Well, if you're attacking Nebula, you're attacking my favorite creator that is part of Nebula because they are part owner and therefore they have an investment. But here's the thing. If that makes that kind of a problem for the quote unquote privileged demographic, Ben Jordan pointed out a Nebula person plagiarizing him and Nebula sent him a copyright takedown in response, as well as sent a mob of people at him on Twitter. Adam Neely repeated something he heard in an interview and got a big old avalanche of hatred. That's cool, right? These cishet white privileged males got it bad. That's good, right? Well, no, because if, as all of these people assert, these things are weaponized via identity lines, if the privileged demographic gets treated this way, then when it comes back around to the queers, it's gonna be worse. And it absolutely will come back to the queer community. There is no such thing as a means to cancel people that came from the queer community that isn't then re-weaponized back against the queer community. If you're so concerned about harming queer creators, you're creating the means to do it right here. In fact, you have harmed a big old queer creator, James Summerton. Now, I'm not saying that I think that he's good and he is potentially quite the asshole. Yes, but I also don't think that's really the problem. You see, before H-Bomb's video, James Summerton was known as a queer proto-socialist that made mostly content about queer theory. You know, talking about gay shit, like the social norms on the Grindr app. There's a video of his that's like that. He started off as a queer proto-socialist, and now he's a misogynist scammer who is allegedly catfishing people. Because the way this type of cancellation happens... Uh, once you're a baddie, you can't be queer anymore, for one. And for two, you must be a baddie in every possible way we can vaguely link to you. If we can say that somebody has said something somewhere about you, we can say that that's fact, basically. I mean, I really don't know. Summerton could be a huge piece of shit, and I don't want to say that that's like impossible or defend him but i also don't want to attack him because i don't know anything about it and most of these people don't know anything about it they just know that h-bomb showed him as a baddie now regardless if they're entirely correct about all of the allegations or that he just used some things without crediting the reason that they're disposing of this guy is because he is an outsider who is making good on the bread grift the main bread tubers either don't like him or find him embarrassing in some way, and they had to turn the audience on him so that he was no longer representation. Representation for who? Well, bread tube for one, uh, for another, sexual and gender minorities. Again, he's a creator that covers mostly queer topics, and that is a problem if he's bad representation. So he can't be queer anymore. He will never be referred to as queer. He is so not talked about as a queer person that several of the people in my Discord that I've been talking to about this responded to somebody noting that he's a queer creator that they've taken down with, wait, hold on, James Summerton is queer? Because again, someone who doesn't know who James Summerton is, doesn't know James Summerton's content, doesn't know that. They haven't treated him like a queer creator. They have treated him like a cishet white man, which is, by the way, now that he's a baddie, what he is, regardless of what he is. Now, I made a very important documentary on representation, and I think that it's, it's a good thing to watch here. Uh, I'll link it in the description. My documentaries all run over an hour. They aren't four hours, but they are feature-length documentaries. Uh, so be aware of that. And I'm really making this video to fully explain the point of criticizing people for doing individualist critique rather than systemic critique. It's because individualist critique doesn't change anything. A lot of these people are saying things like, well, it has stopped James Summerton and that's a win. No, it's not. Because all the incentives and rewards that create the position that James Summerton occupied by taking advantage of them, all of that is still there. 
And if the point is to organize a bunch of people to find all the baddies who do the bad things, then what you do is create a witch hunt. People attempting to find people doing plagiarism, which has already yielded a bunch of false positives. And that's really what the whole abolish the police thing is about. Creating the means for people to be their own enforcement of their own standards and will create nothing but conflicts over what's right and wrong, morally speaking, that different factions of people will just war over. Like, I'm not telling you that the police are the good guys or anything, but uh, this ain't the solution. And we've shown you exactly why it's a bad solution, even if those factions didn't war. The false positives mean that innocent people get punished. And if the point is finding people who have used other information without crediting it, you're going to find tons of people who are not doing anything wrong, but that fit the criteria you're hunting for. And again, a lot of them are going to be queer. This is why the personal responsibility ideology and the individualist critique that comes along with it, which is what you're doing, by the way, collectivist left, you're doing an individualism, but this is what those things lead to. You are allowed to think that I just made a video that's mad at somebody for not doing critique the way I want them to. You don't have to listen to me, but if you do listen to me and take me seriously, You'll understand this is not a contrarian opinion. This is what happens when you look at something and you say, I want the harm from that thing to stop. You find the root. And the root, by the way, is not you've heard of the elf on the shelf. What about the hole in your soul? And like I said in the last video, even if the hole in the soul is the cause of plagiarism, it's not. But even if it was... It comes from somewhere, too, and that, again, is the system of capitalism and the result of alienation from it. Still, if what you're doing is trying to find individuals to stop from plagiarizing, as if that will stop the harm of plagiarism, you are fighting the wrong battle because it's not going to stop. It will never stop as long as a system of incentives and rewards creates a path of least resistance for plagiarists to thrive with. Again, it takes time, energy, and focus to be creative, to create something new. And it takes less of that to aggregate content. So, in a system where to publish more things faster that are already proven to work, content aggregation, which includes plagiarism, is the mode that pays. If you want to stop the harm of plagiarism, you have to stop the reason plagiarism benefits people. And in order to do that, you have to address the socioeconomic system. You cannot not do that. And I'll say it again, if you point out a bunch of individuals doing a bad thing, and then you say, I don't really know what to do about it, then you haven't actually pursued the critique, and you've retreated from it. If you have pursued the critique down to the fundamental contradiction, you know what has to be done. Lenin wrote a book about it. It's called, What is to be Done? <laughs> I would recommend reading that if you want something that's not just some dumbass on YouTube blabbing at you about how irritated they are about being misinterpreted. But I am. And I'm fine with saying that. To feel things is a human response. And I understand that many people feel things in response to finding out that some piece of information was used without credit. Sure. But if you want that to stop, you can't just attack a person who's done it. You have to attack the reason they've done it. And again, whether you take that path through the hole in the soul, or if you go by purely materialist critique, you're still going to end up at the same place, which is the system. Socialized production with privatized appropriation of product and profit. Capitalism. And you don't do anything about that by sitting on the internet and identifying baddies who have done the bad thing to dispose of. You do it by building coalitions, relationships, and power in numbers. You don't make Reddit threads where you attack 
some random person you don't know anything about because they said a thing the same way somebody else said a thing, and you think that that should have been attributed. Systemic critique is important not to defend James Somerton from H-bomb, but to actually do something about the thing you're highlighting as bad. People need to start to understand that. It is right to be upset about how things work in the world, but it is wrong to direct it at just individuals. It doesn't even matter how bad they are. If you're directing your ire at individuals, you're not doing anything. It just feels like you're doing something. Have a good day.